Hey, before we get into the testosterone truths, I want to share with you my truth. What is my story? How did I get here? How did Farhan Kawaja become Dr. Farhan Kawaja and then Doc Testosterone? And here telling you all about it. So, one thing I'm super happy about right now in the moment is that I surprised my girlfriend here a few days ago. I'm in Stockholm and my girlfriend's Swedish. I met her in Brooklyn, New York City. And I fucking love her. You, you, I fucking love this girl. We have amazing, mind-blowing sex multiple times every day. I'm fully, fully satisfied in my masculinity with this girl. Amazing erections. My sex drive is like a sex freak. I'm an animal with this girl. And having this feeling of masculinity, of confidence, of sexual health, sexual energy, of being fit and be able to use my body to fuck this girl like I want. And just seeing her scream and just be so energetic and passionate about me and how much she loves me. It's so wonderful. I, I want to tell you how I got here. Look, I'm just like you. I transform myself by taking actions. Four years ago, at the age of 32, that's when I first had sex. That's when I lost my virginity. I was a 32-year-old virgin. But you know what? The most amazing sex that I've had in my life happened just recently, in the last year or two. It took me a while to understand the truths of testosterone, to understand the truths of confidence, of vulnerability, of sensitivity, of intimacy, to actually become the man that I am today. So, just like any other immigrant, um, you know, I came to Dallas from Pakistan. I'm a Pakistani. I was born in Karachi, Pakistan, to you know, Muslim family, super conservative, very, very hardcore religious culture, relatives, uh, you know, all doing what society has planned for them. And I was on that track too. I did my PhD in neuroscience, my master's in neuroscience, my undergrad was in computer science and engineering. And I studied at some of the best universities in the world. And I was quite happy actually during that time. You know, growing up as a kid, I was a super duper science nerd. My relatives would brag to their friends about how good I was at math and, and how I could uh, memorize the table all the way to 12 as just a little boy. And, uh, you know, I became this model kid in my, in my mosque, or, you know, we call it a Jamaat Khana. This is a, like a religious prayer place. I was the model kid. All the parents wanted their kids to be like me because I had the best grades in the school. I uh, was just always studying, praying, you know, went to the mosque or, you know, Jamaat Khana every day. Um, I was doing community service. Just, just, I was just a really good kid. But towards the end of my PhD, I realized that the experiences that I wanted to get in life, you know, like with my masculine energy, there was something missing. There was something going on because I was becoming aware of who I was. You know, it's like I'm a fucking doctor and I don't love myself. Like, I don't have high self-esteem. I'm afraid to talk to girls. I have very low confidence. I'm masturbating to porn every day since I was 12. I'm hiding while I'm masturbating from my parents so they don't see me. I'm coming in 30 seconds. I started realizing these things. And... I wasn't allowed to sleep over people's houses. I wasn't allowed to go to camps. I wasn't allowed to make friends outside of my close-knit religious community. And I always wondered about that. Like, I wondered about the different cultures. You know, I wonder how white blonde girls are. I wonder how Latinas are. I wonder when I'm going to have sex. Because my mentality was society's plan. Shouldn't have sex before marriage be a good kid, 
don't have a girlfriend, study hard, be that good model kid. But as I was learning about the suffering that I was undergoing at the time, I wanted to make a drastic change. So seven days after my PhD, I moved to Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, I became a pickup artist. I joined a community of pickup artists who taught me improv. These uh, one-on-one sessions where I would go to a club or a bar or a grocery store or the Las Vegas street or casino and approach girls. And at that time, my confidence was so low. I had never had sex before. I had never kissed a girl before. I had actually never been comfortable enough touching my penis. I was afraid to touch my penis. When I was a kid, I was afraid to masturbate this way. So what I would do is I would lie with my belly on the floor or sometimes even on the bathtub and I would like roll around to masturbate and and thank God that didn't like hurt my penis or something because I would do it in the bathtub, on the carpet, on the floor and like I would come, it would feel so good, my orgasm would be so amazing but I was so stupid, such a fucking moron at the time. Anyway, so uh, when I published my first paper, this was a really good paper in the Journal of Neuroscience, I didn't really feel that much better. Like I still felt like shit. You know, that Publishing that paper didn't allow me to go have confidence with a girl or have amazing erections or libido and perform in bed. I'd never done that before. I had no idea even how to do it. I was a fat kid skinny fat which is even worse I didn't know how to weight lift you know it, my hair was shitty I didn't know how to dress I my fashion was dumb I actually I remember in my undergrad my my first university degree I was afraid to go to the gym because I didn't want the girl I married to like me for my body I was thinking all the time about, oh man, if I work out and have a good body, then the girl won't like me for me. And the awareness that I had of who Farhan Khwaja is was horrible. I was this Farhan that society wants me to be. The conditioning, the brainwashing was at a peak at that time. So. I moved to Vegas and there I tried to overcome my fear of approaching girls. Just cold approach, just randomly seeing a girl and going up to her and telling her how hot she is or how much, you know, how I feel about her or, you know, gaming her. And that was an interesting experience for that year because I didn't have sex, but I did kiss a girl. And I brought girls to my apartment. And they wanted to have sex with me. Like, you know, I, my game became really good. I became a coach, actually. And I started coaching other students one-on-one or one-on-three of approaching girls. And I became the head coach there. Um, I became the director of that program at a certain point, and, and I stayed director for about eight months. So I was running that program in Las Vegas. So a PhD working in a lab recording from monkeys, publishing papers and going to conferences and, 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 and being like that proud model kid, that nice guy, goes to Vegas, learns how to kiss a girl and also brings girls home. And, and dude, I, was, I became so good like mentally that I was able to pull girls from clubs that even the instructors couldn't pull. The, the actual head executive instructors of that program wouldn't be able to pull and I would. So I was bringing those girls home, but I was not fucking them. I had limp dick, like massive, massive limp dick issues over and over and over. And it was the feedback that I was getting was bringing me into a downward spiral. So I would have a girl right next to me in bed and instead of fucking her, I would be afraid. I would, be, I would have this sexual shaming, this sexual anxiety in me. And I would never be able to fuck her. Like, I couldn't penetrate. I would become limp right before I penetrated. Or I would penetrate just a bit and limp again. And 
girl after girl thought that she's ugly and like she, I find her unattractive, but obviously that's not the story. Like, I just suck at, didn't have sexual health. So that year in Vegas taught me a couple of things. One thing was that looks matter. I need to look fucking good because it's not for the girl. It's not for society. It's for me. If I look good, if I have the best fashion and style that any man around me can dream of, if I look fucking good and I take my shirt off and I show my six pack at a swimming pool or, or anywhere in front of a girl in bed, if I am aware of my breath, if I have this great experience with my body every day where I'm sleeping well, I'm eating well, I have amazing energy and focus and productivity, then that's great. That's something to be proud of. With Melanie here, my girlfriend in Stockholm, she loves my body. She actually liked me in the beginning only for my body because she didn't know who the hell I was. She tells me stories now where she saw me in, in Brooklyn in, in uh, the apartment I was in and she was like, holy shit, I want to fuck that guy. Holy fucking shit, I want to fuck him. She tells me this. And vice versa. When I saw her, I wanted to fuck her. And now we're fucking all the time. So a guy like me, this Pakistani immigrant brown kid who has literally no hope when it comes to getting a hot girl and dating a fucking stunning, stunning blonde bombshell from Sweden. <laughs> it's a dream of, of every you know, Pakistani kid, brown kid growing up and I achieved this dream. It's crazy. It's so crazy to feel that. And Las Vegas, that one year, was that kickstart for me. But remember, you don't have to be that extreme. I'm crazy, I'm an extreme person. But all of that knowledge will be given to you in these truths, free of charge. <laughs> Let me get to the next step in the story. So in Vegas, one thing I realized is that my body sucked. I was not able to perform in bed. I did not have good sexuality, masculinity. There was something missing. I needed to reclaim my masculinity. So I did what any kid who wants to learn about weightlifting would do. I moved to a gym. For eight months in Florida, I moved to this gym, which is one of the best gyms in the world. And I trained with the top, top fitness trainers in the world. I learned strength training, how to deadlift, how to squat, how to bench press, how to pull up, how to lunge, how to work on my booty, how to work on my abs, how to work on my biceps. I developed this curiosity, this inner energy, this inner desire to learn everything I can about my body, about breathing, about bioenergetics, about meditation about muscular imbalances. I went to chiropractors, I went to neurosomatic therapists, I went to neuromuscular therapists, I did uh, Tai Chi, Qigong with uh, the, the boss's brother actually, he did private classes every week with me. I did Reiki, I did yoga, you name it, I did it. And a lot of those experts, a lot of those people that I was around, my mentors, they taught me the value of practicality. They taught me the value of applying knowledge. They taught me the value of the difference between theory and practice. And all of those experiences that I've had, I'm going to bring them to you one by one in these 14 testosterone truths. So that was the second part of the story. The third part is when I became Doc Testosterone. I wanted to share this knowledge with everyone about nutrition, about diet, exercise, about sleep, about intermittent fasting, calories, meditation, about muscular imbalances, about breathing, about mental health, how to transform your mind, how to transform your life from the inside out, how to get that core confidence. So I started this YouTube channel called Doc Testosterone. And I started selling eBooks and, and video courses and I developed this entire tribe called the Doc Testosterone Tribe. And I've had that for the last three years. But I will admit one thing. 
I haven't made a YouTube video in the last three and a half months. And the insights about testosterone and masculinity and core confidence and sexual health that I've learned in the last three and a half months with this girlfriend and other girls that I've been with before her, it's mind blowing. Look, this is the thing. The ability for me to prove my sexual performance and my erection quality, my libido to myself, it was manifested by this girl, with this girl. So now I am 100% confident that everything that I've done Every single step that I made, every single experience that I had to transform my mind and my body worked. That's the cool thing. So all those myths and misinformation that I was following in life, the fact that I shattered and destroyed that from my body and mind, the fact that I learned the truth of testosterone, the truth of masculinity, of core confidence, of sexual health, of productivity, of focus, of having a tight fucking fit body. All of that is now manifested and proven. Now I know it works. Before I was not 100% sure. Now I'm 100% sure. So I'm bringing to you what worked. Because I know that I tried a lot of things that did not work when it comes to becoming the man of your prime. So that is what I'm bringing to you as well. And you know what? Over the years, I'm going to share all this stuff in the truths. A lot of things have happened. You know, I went to Colombia because I became depressed here in New York. I went there last year for a couple of months. I learned Spanish quite a bit. While I was there, I became fluent. Um, I learned salsa dancing. I developed a social circle in Toronto. I already had developed one in Montreal. Then I developed one in Colombia. Now I developed one in New York City and in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Now I'm developing one in Stockholm. Um, all those insights, all those stories, you know, what happened with the students in immersion. Uh, uh, by immersion, I mean, and you know, what happened with the students in Las Vegas, uh, the students I coached. What is the truth behind those executive instructors, those pickup artists that tell you that they get hot girls, that, you know, the ones they tell you that uh, they're dating the, the supermodels and the hottest women in the world. What is the truth behind all that? What is the truth behind people who say things, but they don't show things and do things? I saw all that with my eyes. I'm going to expose everything, man. I'm not holding anything back in these videos. I'm going to tell you things that no one can tell you because I don't give a fuck now about anything. I don't give a fuck about, oh, I'm not going to hurt someone. I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. So you're very lucky that you're watching this. And I'm very fortunate that you're here with me. I'm very fortunate that you are in this tribe. <sighs> Let me tell you something else. You can do and become what I have done and became. You might even be able to do better. Look, man, I started when I was 31. I'm 36 now. If you're younger than me, you might be able to get there faster. If you're my age, you'll definitely get there faster. And even if you're older than me, you can get there faster. Because I'm going to give you the hardcore truth. So have faith in yourself. I have faith in you. The tribe has faith in you. Really, really be honest with yourself. Admit to yourself the realities. And we're going to get you what you want. But in order for you to get there, you have to become vulnerable. You have to become intimate with yourself. Vulnerable with yourself. Admit things to yourself and to others. One huge benefit that I have learned in my life, that I've had in my life, is that I've always disclosed my inner feelings to the outside world and look I did that through my YouTube videos to you and others and that's helped me a lot and now I'm giving you a platform so you can do it as well 
And that leads me to today's challenge for you. Be honest. What is your truth? What problems are you facing? What is your biggest issue right now when it comes to masculinity, sexual performance, erections, libido, fat loss, muscle gains, mental health, depression, hair health? What is it? What is the one problem, the one issue, the one suffering that you're facing? Tell us that in the Facebook group, The Testosterone Truth Official. And I'm going to reiterate something that's very important. We are your brothers and sisters. This is a community of testosterone truth seekers. This is a community of people who are positive, are like-minded. We are a real tribe here. So be vulnerable and very honest when you post on the Facebook group. I'm going to give you live feedback and I'm going to have the other members of the tribe give you live feedback. That is literally the only way to learn. All the mentorship that I've received in my life, you have that mentorship right now in your hands, right now at your disposal. So take advantage of it, man. I look forward to your post in the Facebook group. I look forward to you answering this challenge and fulfilling and accepting and dominating this challenge on this first day of the Testosterone Truths. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening. Ciao from Stockholm.